Hey everybody, this is Reapy Ron, and welcome back to the channel. Here is going to be another tier list. This time we are going to be looking at the easiest classes to learn, or the easiest perks to learn. Um, this was a video suggestion by Mikhail Timo Timonian? I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that name. But uh, thank you very much, Mikhail. So I thought that would be a really interesting idea as to where to place them based on how difficult they actually are to learn. And when I say to learn, I don't mean just um, to pick up and play. Most of the classes in this game are fairly straightforward in how to pick up and play them. Certain ones are definitely going to be more uh, user friendly, more noob friendly, however you'd like to look at it. Um, some classes are definitely going to be more new player oriented because they just sort of work. You throw on whatever weapon you want to try and the class is really straightforward. But the class might have a bunch of different uh, factors in it that might make them more or less valuable depending on how good you are. So let's talk about each of these classes one at a time and I'll place them the easier that they are to actually be really good, um, like very easy to learn perks are going to be up higher. The very hard to learn perks are going to be down lower. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad perks, but they will take extra time investment for you to get used to. So first up we have Berserker. So in my overall um, class tier rating list, Berserker was definitely the top of S tier. Um, actually, they were second in S tier. They are an incredibly powerful class if you're good with them. Um, they have a huge amount of survivability with their damage reduction, with their movement speed, with their health regen. Um, assuming you're going health regen and movement speed otherwise, then they have even more health, so they're even tankier. They have passive damage reduction, and they have passive um, damage over time reduction too. The main thing that's difficult when learning Berserker is the parrying times and the blocking times. Blocking you can do at absolutely any time, and you don't have to worry about it. Pairing you have to do at specific points, and that can be difficult to learn. Once you get it down though, it's very satisfying because then you seem even more tanky than you already were. Uh, this class can be quite frustrating though early on because it does feel very sluggish in the low levels. Uh, before level 10 you don't swing your weapons particularly quick. Um, parrying isn't as rewarded until you hit level 15. Um, you know, before level 5 you don't have any increased movement speed or any increased tankiness. Those are all kind of uh, difficult hurdles to get over and it I think it pushes people away from the class to at least try it because the class can seem a bit difficult and a bit complicated at least when starting but once you have it down it's not that hard that being said it is somewhat of a hard class to learn how to parry correctly so I think I'm going to put berserker maybe in C tier because I don't think they're the hardest class to learn but it, it does take quite a bit of time getting used to the timing, um, especially if you're playing um, strictly on servers and you have a lot of ping. If you have a lot of ping, then Berserker becomes way more difficult to uh, time blocks correctly. And then you just kind of have to get used to it for whatever the server's doing at that point or whatever your internet's doing at that point. If you're playing solo, though, it's not as bad. That way you get a more consistent feel to it. And once you get that consistent feel down you can kind of apply it to however good or bad your ping is. All right, Commando. All of their skills are pretty straightforward. They also get bonuses that help newer players, like being able to see the Zed's health so they know what Zed to focus down or how close they are to killing it. They can also call that out if they're uh, playing with newer players. They can see invisible Zeds, so the Stalkers, uh, Patriarch, and Matriarch, whenever they go cloaked, you can see them, which is great for newer players. All the Assault Rifles are pretty easy to use. A lot of people that have uh, have any real first person shooter experience, whether you're good or bad at the games, will understand exactly how to play commando. Um, their weapons, like early weapons really aren't the best for commando. Later weapons are pretty good though. Once you hit tier three, tier four weapons, commando has some pretty decent weapons. As commando, you also have to understand that you're not really supposed to be trying to kill large things by yourself. Um, at least in a at least in higher difficulties on large lobbies, that's kind of under that's kind of easy to understand too. You want to be killing a lot of little things, and especially when Zed time triggers, you want to be focusing down whatever is the easiest targets for you to hit and to kill, so you can extend it longer um, to provide more utility for the team. 
Um, like I said, that's that'll come once you hit level 25, though. Before that, it's still a useful ability to learn how to do, but it's it's not necessary. And I think Commando's probably the high end of A tier. Um, I'm not sure if I put them in S tier as to how easy they are, because just kind of learning how to ex extend Z time the most effectively um, can be kind of difficult. That being said, if you have somebody that's like a level 25 sharpshooter, um, you will be able to not worry about that as much. So that's also a thing to consider. So I'm going to put them into high A tier, bordering on S tier as to how easy they are to play. All right, support. Um, support is an extremely easy class to learn, and it's probably one of the most, uh, like, newer player-friendly classes in the game. Um, shotguns are very easy to use. You don't need to be going for headshots. Body shots work just fine. Um, you, all of your weapons do really high damage. All of your weapons are pretty good. You don't really have any bad weapons, so there's no real, like, wrong way to build support. You have extra weight so you can experiment with other things. Um, you have the ability to weld up doors, which is, I mean, well, fix broken doors, I should say. You can weld up doors faster, too. But that's a pretty easy skill to learn. Um, uh, the only thing that I can think of that's, there's like two minor things that you're going to have to learn with support. One is to be able to supply your team with ammo. Um, just realizing that you have that ability, so don't stick your face directly into the pod when pod is activated because if you do that then nobody can grab you because it wants to um interacting with the pod overrides interacting with any other player so you can't do that with uh support or demo so that's like one thing that you got to learn make sure you don't shove your face into the pod just so your team can more easily grab ammo from you um and like the other thing is be careful of your own grenades because you can blow yourself up quite easily but I can say the same thing about Commando. It's it's very easy to blow up your yourself with uh, Commando's grenades. So I think I'm going to put support probably at the top of S tier. They are a pretty easy class to learn. There's not really a high uh, skill ceiling on support. Uh, you just kind of got to learn basic positioning of where to be. And that's about it. Like, yeah, support is just one of the easiest classes. There's also like no... Zeds you have to look out for. If there's any kind of Zed, you can kill it with your shotgun. So, yeah, support, probably one of the easiest classes to, to learn how to play. Um, all right, up with, up next we have Medic. Medic is actually pretty easy too. Um, you do basically everything that every other class can do where you can kill realistically just about anything you do it slower than everybody else though um and your all your weapons have the ability to heal allies now mostly with medic is what you're gonna want to do is patrol where your team is so a good team will kind of spread out so that they're they're clearing they're uh, covering each other's um flanks to some extent but then once something bad happens, um, flush pounds come in, husk blows somebody up, scrakes get aggroed, something like that, you don't necessarily want to stay in that uh, position. You want to spread out or cluster together in a safe spot and then fall back all together or fall back individually so that you can regroup. So with medic, what you want to do is hold that position as long as possible by continually patrolling this area healing anybody that needs healing and just killing small stuff. That's mostly what your job is going to be with medic. So there is a bit more of an, uh, of an, uh, amount of awareness that you have to have with, um, medic than with other classes. But that being said, medic is probably the tankiest class in the game. They have so much armor, bonus health, potentially damage reduction, the ability to heal themselves faster, the ability to heal everybody else and the leech health off of that. Their medic grenades are absolutely amazing and they cannot hurt you in any way whatsoever. Uh, I think medic is also one of the easiest classes to play and I'm going to put it up into S tier right next to support. I'm not sure which one is necessarily easier. Once he, I mean like medic is pretty easy because you have uh, a weapon that 
as long as you're healing people with, you're making money from, you don't even need to necessarily be doing a lot of the killing. Um, so long as you're keeping people alive, there's like some small mechanics that you can learn with medic, like how good your medic grenades can be at choke points at any sort of door. If you close a door and throw your medic grenade at the closed door, you're guaranteed to pretty much kill anything that's on the other side of it, short of like flesh pounds or scrags. Besides, like, like I said, the patrolling, the patrolling can be a bit difficult, especially if your team really wants to spread out, then you just want to stay with the most amount of people um, possible while still having like long lines of sight to whoever you can heal but that's not always possible because your team doesn't always want to play that way so all right up next we have demo demo is actually kind of a difficult class to well it's it's both an easy and a difficult class to play demo is a very um easy to explain class uh, you can, I mean, you blow stuff up. That's all you do. You blow things up. What can be more difficult, though, is learning the distance when blowing things up, especially with various um, demo weapons. The grenade rifle, uh, the M79 grenade launcher is easy to hurt yourself with. The seal squill is easy to hurt yourself with. The RPG, you can sometimes hurt yourself with, I believe, but it's it's not as bad because there is that. Um, also, learning the distances of when you're uh, grenades become active is another one. So like the RPG, the M16, the, uh, M79 grenade launcher, the, um, the big rotating six round grenade launcher. I can't remember what that one's called. All of those don't really do much at close range. You're going to shoot something and maybe not even kill it because you were too close using it. So you need to learn your distance and you need to learn when to blow things up and when to not. Because sometimes it might seem like a good idea to shoot at your seal squill as fast as possible, set off everything, and blow up as much stuff as possible. But you forgot where you set it, you step on it, you blow yourself up. Um, same thing with like C4, or especially with dynamite. Um, so I, I know a lot of demos just, at least a lot of demos trying to learn demo don't even use their dynamite just because they're, they've blown themselves up with it quite a few times and it just makes them feel silly. Uh, but don't feel bad if you're doing that. I've done it plenty of times myself. Same with like C4, uh, any of that. So they're not a an, an real easy class to learn to play. And even when you learn how to play it well, you, you're you still susceptible to making mistakes like that. You throw your C4 a bit short, you throw a stick of dynamite too close to you. Um, you overestimate the fact that you have the, uh, potential to not be one hit. So they're actually not an easy class to learn how to play effectively. They're a very easy class to learn how to play though. So I think I'm going to put them probably in C tier with Berserker. I feel like they're about on that same level. Like Berserker has a lot more technical aspects to it where, you know, timing is timing and positioning are so uh crucial to you but then like demo is just like learning how to not blow yourself up and how to blow things up more effectively all right and then we got firebug firebug is probably one of the more difficult classes to learn how to play because it plays so much differently than pretty much every other class besides maybe medic to an extent and that is that you do damage over time which can be a Strange concept if you're playing other classes that don't rely on damage over time. If you're playing somebody like support, especially where it's just, you know, the only damage over time weapon you really have is like the uh, trench gun, the dragon's breath um, to just burn things. With firebug, everything does this. So you it helps to learn how effectively all of your weapons are because a lot of newer firebugs will grab like the flamethrower, torch something until it's absolutely dead to where it's still falling over and you're still torching it and then let go of it. And you've wasted so much fuel killing something that would have been dead if you would just spurt it out a little bit of fire at it. So learning how effective your weapons are takes a lot of getting used to. Um, same with um, potentially your positioning too. Not so much with firebug though, because firebug doesn't necessarily need to be in a good position um, but it's very common for you to get into that habit if you're playing a lot of like commando or SWAT or support or something where 
you stay in one spot, gun down as many things as possible. When the place starts getting overwhelmed, you, you know, maybe you panic, you start shooting everything as quickly as you can, and then it it just kind of messes up. It just kind of devolves into chaos at that point. Uh, firebug doesn't necessarily need to do that because you can push things out of the way very easily with a fire. You can also use molotovs to light things on fire and it becomes easier as you level up because you take less and less fire damage the more and more you level up. So you don't light yourself on fire um, at all once you max level firebug, but before that you still have a possibility of lighting yourself on fire, which can be um, rather annoying and difficult to get used to. Um, so I think I'm going to put Firebug actually into maybe D tier in terms of how difficult they are, because they are so much different than every other class. Like if you get good at playing, uh, Commando, it's pretty easy to switch over to like support or medic or SWAT. Um, you know, you get used to it. Uh, there, there's a lot of classes that are at least similar in mechanics where Firebug is quite a bit different. So that's why I'm putting them there. That being said, if you get used to Firebug quickly, then every other class feels a little bit weird too, so. Alright, up next we have Gunslinger. Gunslinger can actually be a pretty difficult class to get used to as well. Um, at least to learn. Explaining Gunslinger is very simple though. It's, you run fast and you do really high headshot damage. Um, they are one of the easiest classes to explain in that regard but they are still probably one of the more difficult ones to learn how to play effectively. Um, hitting headshots is pretty much not necessarily mandatory, especially at lower levels, but on higher levels, it makes such a difference if you are a good gunslinger and can hit headshots consistently. Um, you will just tear through everything so effectively. Uh, you also have to be very um, conscious of how well you're roaming you roam similar to like Berserker does, where you don't necessarily want to be stuck in one position. You want to be moving around constantly and make the most use of your movement speed. And that tends to mean relying much more on yourself than on the team. I think I'm going to put Gunslinger in B tier. They seem like a medium-ish class. Like if you, again, if you're good with most other classes, you kind of learn how to play um, like this. But this is where headshots count for much more than other classes so i think b maybe i'd put them in c tier i'm not sure all right we got sharpshooter um sharpshooter can be another difficult class for people to learn effectively i mean this is pretty much like the sniping class so if you're good at sniping then you, you're probably going to pick up on this pretty easily if you're not good at sniping though then this can be more difficult and from what I've seen in pretty much every first person shooter, not everybody plays snipers. Most people don't play snipers for the, uh, for the most part. Um, so that can already be kind of difficult. Um, depending on how you build can also be difficult if you're playing the running gun sniper where you have to be, you don't necessarily have to be hitting headshots, but you do have to be, uh, to a pretty decent level of accuracy when running around. Um, that can be kind of difficult, especially if you're switching between the two play styles, because the other prominent play style is um, holding the position sniper. So you will, you know, sit, you will pretty much root yourself in place and be a turret right there, just picking off anything that you can. That can be a bit difficult. That can be kind of hard um, because the best sharpshooters will likely combine these two styles together where you will get into a good position, snipe as many things as possible, move from that position to get into another good position where you can help out your team and then shoot things. Or if you're forced out of that position, you don't panic and you can still reliably do your job and you can potentially move back, root yourself in place and shoot things depending on which build you're running, of course. Um, that being said, they are kind of difficult to learn. They aren't the easiest. Um, I think I'm also going to put Sharpshooter into D tier. Maybe. I don't know. It, it's like D or C tier, and I'm not sure which. I guess D tier because Sharpshooter can be super valuable to the team, but they can also just potentially just die early and not do a whole lot because they are so squishy. 
Uh, all right, SWAT. Um, SWAT is a pretty easy class. Uh, submachine guns are really effective against all small things. That's mostly what you're going to be wanting to use them for. Uh, flashbangs are pretty easy too because you can't hurt yourself with them and they stun enemies um, pretty easily. All the submachine guns are quite easy to learn too. They usually don't have that much recoil. You can shoot them quickly. Um, and like I said, they do good damage against small things. They do okay damage against larger enemies. Um, combined with the flashbangs, they can be pretty useful. But I guess I'm going to put SWAT probably in A tier. It's pretty similar to Commando. I don't know if it's... Well, I'm going to put it above Commando in terms of how easy it is to play. Uh, and how easy it is to learn. Because you don't have to learn like Z extension. All you really have to learn is just where to position yourself and what you're shooting and when you should use your flashbangs. That's about it. SWAT really doesn't have... I don't know. Maybe I'd put SWAT into S tier. I might put SWAT into S tier just on how easy they are to learn. They're pretty straightforward. Uh, I guess I put them behind these other ones a little bit. But not by much. They're pretty easy to learn how to play. All right. And then we got Survivalist. And Survivalist is... Um, it kind of varies depending on what play style you want. So I'm kind of tempted just to put them into D tier right away because survivalist can play in practically anybody's way. Um, they don't particularly benefit from playing in like Firebug's way though, but anybody else, they can play pretty much their same style. That being said, if you're going to mix and match styles though, that can take getting used to and getting used to um, their perks as opposed to everybody else's because most of their perks are actually pretty straightforward. And once you've learned them with the other classes, you'll catch on to them like real quick, but it will be kind of jarring if you played uh, one class a whole ton and then switch over to survivalist and think that you can build the same way and do everything exactly the same for a large extent. You can do that, but it's going to feel quite a bit different um, because SWAT, because you have like, SWAT's level 5 where it's like as long as you got armor you won't take uh, health damage so you can actually afford to take some hits that you might not want to on other classes. Um, you can run around like Berserker with uh, melee weapons out but you don't regen health like Berserker so that can feel a bit weird. You can blow things up bigger like uh, Demo and you can still blow yourself up extremely easy with Survivalist. Uh, potentially even easier because you don't have any explosive resistance. So I'm, I think I'm going to put them in D tier just because there's so many variables on how to play survivalist that it, it can be an extremely difficult class. It could also be an extremely easy class though, too, if you just pick, you know, the weapons that you like using and get very used to playing that way. Um, good example of this would be like, you take the Hemoclobber and like the Kaboom stick every time with, um, the melee perk enabled so you run around faster when you have the hemoclobber out that way you get used to blocking and parrying with it too um, it's a very easy and very user-friendly weapon you can even heal yourself with it so you get even more sustain and then like the kaboom stick you can't blow yourself up with it does really high damage you don't necessarily need to be accurate like that would be a very simple build to play with um survivalist you, you you really wouldn't have to learn all that much. But then if you are going to, you know, keep switching your build around, you kind of have to keep in mind what you're doing. So I guess this is where I'd put all of the classes in terms of how easy they are to play um, and how easy they are to get to a high level with them. And not necessarily in, you know, earning experience, but learning all of their mechanics and using them effectively. I believe that the easiest classes are probably support, medic, and... SWAT and I would like to ask everybody watching this video too in what order would you place all of these classes because I'm very curious um, from easiest to hardest to learn how to play at least how to play effectively because I would like to see what other people would consider the easiest classes and the hardest classes to learn how to play well um, so this is my list hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for watching and I will talk to all of you guys next time till then stay cool and bye